Hey, welcome back to Trucking California with Velox 18. We are waking up this morning to some, uh, some foggy weather right here in Paso Robles. And uh, we're gonna get started. We gotta get up to Salinas. We've got about 90 miles to go to make our delivery. And then we gotta find a load. That's the goal for today. We gotta find a load to put on the truck this, uh, this, this afternoon. And so uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. That's what, that, you guys are gonna go through that process with me. Uh, sometimes it's hard to show you guys everything, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my darndest, my darndest, to show you guys how I look for a load. Uh, a lot of times I've been pre-booking loads lately, but uh, today there was not a lot on the load boards um, uh, earlier this week, I'm trying to find a load for today. Today is Wednesday. And so we're gonna go make our delivery and then uh, I'm gonna try and show you guys what I do. Uh, we'll be looking primarily on the DAT load board because uh, all the broker apps, I've been keeping an eye on them and they don't got any loads, they don't got any freight. So uh, we'll be looking at the DAT load board waiting for something last minute to pop up uh, from another broker, from, from a, a small brokerage. Uh, we might even have to fill out a carrier package today. I don't know, I don't know, because I don't know who we're gonna be hauling for, I don't know what we're gonna be doing, I don't know where we're gonna be going. All that to say, that uh, today's gonna be an exciting day. Actually, it might not be. It might just be making this delivery and then going home. But, we're gonna try, all right? We're gonna give it the old college try, and uh, you guys are coming along for the ride. So, uh, I'm gonna go get in this truck so we can roll the dang music, let's go! And we're off. We have um, not a lot of time left on our uh, on our clock today, but we just took seven and a half hours in the sleeper berth, which uh, means that once we um, <clears throat> I like them, bro. I like them. Right, they got nice trucks over there. I was admiring those trucks when I came in. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, th I think you guys couldn't see those trucks. That's that's a bummer for you guys. You guys missed out because those were awesome trucks. Awesome Peterbilt 389s. Uh, actually, one of them might have been a 379 too. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, it's hard to tell sometimes because guys like to take 389s and put the square headlights on them, the, the, the double square re uh, rectangle headlights and stuff, uh, which is cool. I like that look. I like that style. But... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I didn't know what they were trying to do, and I don't think they knew what they were trying to do until they did it. But... Um, Anyway, so we've got 90 miles to go. We've got 100, 100. Uh, we have uh, an hour and like 50 minutes left on our uh, clock. Um, you know, we were able to to uh, pause our drive time, but once we stop and take three hours off, that's the way the sleeper berth works. You're splitting your 10 hour break up. So I took seven hours here. I'll take three hours up here at the receiver and that'll get me um, the amount of time that I drove before my seven hour break will we'll come back to, uh, we'll come back to my, um, <clears throat> come back to my clock. So once I take my three hours off over there, then I'll get everything that I used yesterday, which was quite a bit. I used quite a bit of drive time. Uh, this is actually, it's a little bit busier today than it was the other day. So, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of headlights. I got this little lane I can use, so I'm gonna use it, but I'm sure I just made a lot of people nervous. These people coming up on this northbound side. Through these gears, 
But uh, anyway, all right. So uh, we're on our way, and um, did want to give a shout out because I'm right here uh, at the San Paso truck stop. I'm real close to Lake Nacimento. Or the dragon, as a lot of them call it. You guys are looking at a map. Lake Nacimento is a lake that kind of looks, from an aerial view, kind of looks like a dragon. But uh, anyway, I got uh, my best friend growing up, Brian. He watches the channel. Um, I don't know how religiously he watches it, but I know he watches it. And, uh, and he works out there at uh, Heritage Ranch, out there at Lake Nacimento. And then uh, I got another subscriber that told me he works out there at Heritage Ranch. And I was like, hey, do you guys know each other? And they're like, nah, we don't. But now, now they're on the lookout for each other. So uh, anyway, Kevin, Brian, what's up? I'm right here, right here in your guys' neck of the woods. In fact, Kevin told me that uh, right there, the, the restaurant right there at the San Paso Truck Stop, he said it was real good. So I should have should have given, given myself a little more time, but only taking seven hours off. You know, by the time I I uh, got got myself ready for bed, you know, used the restroom, got ready for bed, did all that. I really only slept like six hours, so so I didn't want to wake up early to have breakfast. I stayed in bed till the very last minute so that I could uh, so that I could uh, get as much sleep as I could before we headed out on down the road to get up to Salinas. So we'll uh, cut this off. We'll run up to Salinas. I'll catch up with you guys when we uh, when we get up there. Uh, we should be, um, it, it, it's it's one of the, the southernmost points um, in Salinas that we're going. Uh, I'm not positive, but it might even be off of, uh, right there off that like Spreckles exit. Which, if you guys are ever coming from this direction and trying to get to Monterey, that's actually a little shortcut. If you go and cut across through Spreckles and cut over to the 168 that way. Or the 68. 168 or 68? Now I don't even know. Can't even remember. But it's a shortcut to get out to Monterey. I used to go out there all the time. But uh, anyway, alright. Catch up with you guys when we get down there. Up there. Around there. To the left of there, to the right of there, I don't know. It's hard to do directions this early in the morning, all right? I'll see you when we get where we're going. All right, we're about 10 miles away from our destination, but I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, remind you guys, we've got that donate button down there. Uh, if you click on that button, you will be donating to Love Justice International, which fights human trafficking all around the world. Um, I know people personally that are in that organization. I know it's a good organization, Christian organization. They're out there on the front lines helping fight human trafficking to, uh, you know, uh, for those who are most vulnerable and, and susceptible to trafficking. Um, the people I know are actually out in Nepal and in India, but uh, Love Justice does things in other countries as well, and uh, they do really good work. So that's what that donate button is. Uh, we've raised over $1,500 already uh, to um, get uh, you know, for human trafficking, uh, fighting human trafficking, not for human trafficking, fighting human trafficking for Love Justice International. And uh, the reason why we're doing this campaign is because YouTube uh, just started this fundraiser kind of platform within their, uh, you know, within their, their uh, app. And so right when I got the opportunity to sell merchandise um, at the 10,000 subscriber mark, which we hit in December, um, they opened up this this new uh, kind of thing that you could do, and they don't take any part of the money. All 100% of the money that you donate goes to the organization, so that's awesome. YouTube's actually paying the transaction fees to send the money to them and stuff, so um, you know it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and uh, so I just decided. I said, hey, I'm going to start this merchandise shop. I set up the whole merchandise shop, and I said, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna try and raise money for for uh, Love Justice. Uh, through this new thing that YouTube's doing, this this fundraising platform, and uh, so I just set that goal to two thousand dollars. I probably should have set a lower goal because uh, it was right after Christmas, and not everyone has just tons of cash laying around. But 
anyway, so that's what that donate button is, and that's what we're waiting on for those of you who keep asking for merchandise. Uh, we're just trying to raise money to help fight human trafficking, and uh, as soon as we hit that goal, uh, we will open up the merchandise shelf and uh, allow you guys to purchase Velox 18 hats, shirts, and sweatshirts. And uh, so that's kind of what we're what we're looking at. And I think after uh, after I uh, we hit that goal, I think I'll still leave the the donate button down there uh, and just kind of always make it an option. Remind you guys like, hey, click that button, help help fight human trafficking. Uh, but we got to hit that two thousand uh, dollar goal before uh, before we open up the merchandise shelf. So that's the goal right now. That's what we're doing. Um, that's why that donate button's down there. And uh, I really appreciate everyone who's already given, everyone who's already donated. Like I said, we've raised over $1,500 uh, to fight human trafficking. So I'm stoked on that. And uh, just a little bit more, and we'll hit our goal. So thank you guys, and uh, we'll keep on getting down the road. We're gonna get over there in about uh, 10 minutes. Cool. All right. And uh, we are coming up to this Abbott Road exit. This is definitely the exit I used to take when I would be going out to visit all my uh, friends and family out there on the Monterey Peninsula back in the day. My nephew Parker was born out there. My brother and sister-in-law lived out there uh, when they started their marriage. Uh, they got married out there at the church in Monterey and uh, still got friends. Still got friends that live in Monterey and uh, even right here in Spreckles, this the little town right here by, by Salinas. Got a few friends that live there. But uh, yeah, this, this I remember, remember taking this off ramp often. You always remember it because it goes to the, the left. You have to be in the fast lane to, uh, to get the exit, but We'll just turn uh, turn in right here. Oh, look at that truck! Woo! I was one of those uh, special special edition, like pride in class or whatever they call it. So here is where we're going. Get into this little business park, Firestone Business Park. So I don't really know where the place is inside here, but we're gonna get in here and uh, figure it out. <laughs> oh man! Maximum clearance 14.2. Oh, right here. Okay, it's right here on the corner. It says. Latitude 36 Foods. All right, let's see where we're supposed to go though for trucks. Does it say? It doesn't. I wonder if I'm supposed to. Uh... Hmm. Honestly, don't know if it's the docks that are over there or if there's other docks up here around this side. I'm just gonna pull off to the side here real quick and then see if I need to back up. I'll catch up with you guys. I think I'm gonna look on my phone and see where where all the docks are around this building. Now that I know that this is the part of the building that that, that where they're at, um, I'm gonna see if there's anything else that I can't see from here because I think they might be the docks that are back there, and I need I might need to back up. So. Check up, check in with you guys once I get this figured out. All right, so it was just right over here to the left. They're the corner uh, suite, so their their main office building is up there where we were, but their uh, shipping and receiving is over here. So they're putting us in the door right away, door dock five. Um, I came over here and just parked over here to get out of the way. We just gotta figure out a way to zigzag back through there. But uh, there's plenty of room, so shouldn't be too big of a deal to get in there. And uh, then we gotta find a load for later. See what we're working with. All right, so we just uh, came up here, nosed up here to the right, so we could get situated for a, uh, a 
driver's side back. ourselves in pretty good. of uh, it's kind of hidden behind the dumpster right here and I was trying to angle it up and I just missed and anytime there's a slant like an angle a ramp down it always affects um, you know how the how the trailer pivots always affects it so it's kind of uh, it makes it kind of funky when you're uh, trying to back down and then and then you hit like a, a, a an angle on the on the loading dock it kind of like makes you pivot a little at a slightly different angle than what you would anticipate <clears throat> It was just flat ground. And yes, somehow guys just nail it every time, but I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> uh, right. All right. I'm gonna go, uh, they wanna be there to break the seals, so I'm gonna go back there, wait for him, then we'll break the seal, and then uh, and then I'll slide the tandems and back it all the way into the dock with the doors open. Sound good? Sound good? Okay, good. All right, so while I was waiting for them to come out and uh, break the seal, this guy pulled up and uh, he wants, he doesn't wanna drop that trailer over in their drop lot and then switch out the trailer and then go drop again and then drop and then because he's got a drop and hook so he asked me if i would pull out of my dock let him dock this this trailer that he has switch with the with the trailer in door number five and then uh that'll let him you know save probably 15 minutes or so on his day so i told him yeah i don't mind doing that um as long as they know inside that that's how we're doing it. So the right when he was asking me that, the guy from inside came in and uh, came out to uh, to uh, um, check my seal. So he took the seal off, and then uh, I said, "Hey, so this guy this guy wants to switch. So uh, you guys are good with that, right?" And he was like, "Yeah, you can take door five. I said, "All right, cool." I said, I don't mind doing it. I just want to make sure you guys know what door I'm in so you guys know to get me offloaded. <laughs> so, I'm gonna pull out over here out of his way. Let him, uh, let him swap his trailers out. And then, um, I'll back it back down into the other, into the void that he creates when he hooks up to his new trailer, so. All right, and now we're back into our dock. Uh, didn't take too long at all, but we're here looking at the DAT load board. 
Uh, we're looking within 150 miles of Salinas and then delivering within 400 miles of Bakersfield. Uh, I like that that kind of radius from Bakersfield kind of catches all of Southern California, some of Northern California. So I can see local loads around up here and uh, even catches, um, you know, Nevada, Arizona, um, and even Southern Utah. So uh, I'm digging it, but man, there's only six, six loads, six loads for that, for within the mileage and, and to, uh, for today's pickup for both reefer and reefer slash dry van. So six, uh, and that 571, it says total results. That's not a real number. So see how these loads down here, um, they're outside of my search parameters. It's like they're close, you know, close, but no cigar. So they're, you know, either lots of deadhead miles to get to the pickup or they're a different freight type. Sometimes they only, you know, they're only available for van and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'd actually be pretty interested in this Turlock to Riverside, the top one. Uh, but that brokerage I've called on these loads before and they require one year of having your, uh, authority. So, um, looks like a, uh, yep. Picks up and de Riverside delivery. Yeah. So it's a one in one. So, I mean, it's not paying terribly high but it would be something to keep the truck moving but um yeah I, i've i've called them before and they they require um that so uh, i've never worked for these other guys these these parakeet logistics but uh coyote they've got a turlock to tracy just a little local load um i think i think i'll go look on the app and see about this load see uh what the the pickup and delivery appointments are and stuff um i mean it's just a little short load 43 miles but you know we can make it make it work maybe make a little bit of money today so uh yeah i think that's what i'll do i'm gonna get off this and go uh check out yeah because these yeah i haven't I haven't worked with these brokerages anyways. ABC Logistics doesn't even have a check mark. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go in there and uh, open up the Coyote app and see what we can find. All right. Well, I figure I'll, I'll show you guys the, um, the Coyote app. So this is the Coyote app. We're looking um, at loads from Salinas. Uh, and that is Reefer within 250 miles of Salinas going anywhere. And... Uh, the load that was on that, the load board on there isn't showing up on here. Um, unless it's like under a Thursday load. Well, it doesn't look like it. So either it already got scooped up or maybe there's something weird in my parameters that isn't allowing the search to, to pop up. But I guess uh, I can't show you guys the process of bidding on the load on here. Well, I'll just show you guys this one. I'm not going to do it, but Taft to Harrisburg, you just click on it. You can either book it for 3,800 or you can make an offer. You can type in either total rate or rate per mile. And uh, so, and I like Coyote because it tells you the actual um, shipper and receiver, uh, which a lot of these places you're, you're kind of blind. They don't want to tell you until you've locked into your rate and then they'll, send you over a driver um, information sheet that tells you that, oh, it's going to this place. It's going to take 10 years. Maybe I should have bid a little higher. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. I guess I'll uh, call my guy and just make sure that it's not up there and make sure I'm not missing something on the app. All right. We uh, got unloaded. We're out of there. And look it. We got El Hueso. And then we got this other truck. So this is uh this is Chris's truck and he came up and uh he pulled up next to me and I'm like oh this guy's trying to show off that stainless steel freaking reefer unit right there that's a bad truck and trailer and uh and then he's like hey man I watch all your videos so Chris what's up bro it's good meeting you and uh yeah not 
Not a bad setup, man. Not a bad setup. And his truck's dirty, but it's not nearly as dirty as mine. So he told me I could get get some uh, some video of it. He's not he's not worried about it. He's like, where you've been driving that you've been getting that that dirty? I'm like, bro, I just haven't washed it in like a month. That's the problem. But uh, yeah, this is um, this is uh, this is where it's at right here. All right. So we are uh, we are leaving. We got our uh, hours reset. And uh, Chris was waving as we were um, as we were pulling out right here, so I had to give him a little honky honk honk. I'm telling you that truck and trailer, it's a really cool setup, really cool setup. But uh, yeah, so um, we got. Uh, our hours back for uh, um, after doing our sleeper burst split so we've got nine and a half hours of drive time today but the problem is we're not gonna end up being able to use any of it because it is uh, um, we're, we're yeah we're we are, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought because I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go. I think I need to turn left. I don't think there's another uh, way to get on the freeway over here except for it to go south. And I don't want to go south, I want to go north. But anyway, I can't find a load, guys. Um, I was looking for today and there's just not a lot going on out there today. So I'm, I shifted my focus to tomorrow. I put in a couple bids for loads for tomorrow and we'll see what happens because uh, there's no, nothing nothing much going on right now. We are, we are uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna be, um, <clears throat> this guy's hauling booty, I'm gonna wait. Um, anyway. So I'm, yeah, the, we're kind of we're kind of stuck today, man. Uh, so I, I think I'm gonna get out of here and um, start heading back to, towards the house, and then I'll look again at what at what's going on on the uh, on the load boards uh, once I get closer to the house, and uh, we'll go from there because as it is right now, I don't think we're gonna end up with with any loads. Uh, today and possibly even tomorrow I don't know we'll see I mean I'm trying to find something but it's not looking promising folks well, we'll start heading back towards the house and then uh, I'll catch up with you guys once uh, once we stop and figure some things out all right we are uh, coming down Pacheco Pass right here by San Luis Reservoir and uh, well we've um, I stopped up there at Costa de Fruta and uh, tried to find a load and uh, tried to find a load for today and then at a certain point I've like stopped looking for today and I'm looking towards tomorrow trying to book something for tomorrow before today ends and uh, trying to find stuff that works with uh, kind of where I want to go what I want to do and you know the timing of when I want to get back home and stuff is proven to be a little bit difficult um, so it's uh yeah a little bit of a bummer i had a load i, I had been on a convoy load uh going from uh Leprino foods down to san diego which is a load i've done before and i've done it for like 2100 before and then i think i did it another time for like for like 1900 so i bid 1900 and then uh, I was willing to go down to even 1800 and so I went to, to uh, go back and, and bid on it and uh, it actually alerted me that I had lost my bid and that someone had taken it for 1750 so uh, I suppose if if you really held me to it I would have done that load for 1700 I would have but I wasn't gonna bid on it 
you know, off the bat at that low rate. I was going to try and get more out of it. But uh, anyway, I ended up missing out. Someone else took it for $17.50. They got a decent load and they're going down into the Southern California market. Should be able to get a good load coming back up north too if they wanted one. I don't know where they're trying to go, obviously. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's what we're doing. So I'm going to head back to the yard and then I'll look for a load again at the yard. Look for a load tomorrow. All right. We made it back to the yard. It is uh, just about three o'clock and um, you know, took another look at the load boards. I was going to record it for you guys, but there's really not that much there. And uh, what is there is like local. There was one that said like Tracy to Lathrop 700 bucks. And I was like, 700 bucks for a local load, I'm down, I'm down. But it was like four stops, five stops. I'm like, I just don't feel like doing like little day cab style, you know, bumping docks all day. Um, that's not really, yeah, I'm not feeling it, not feeling it. And so uh, anyway, uh, one of those things, I'd have to get set up with them too. It was for uh, someone I'm not, I haven't ran any loads for, so I'd have to do a carry packet, which I'm not opposed to doing, but at a certain point, yeah, some stuff's just not worth it. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to park it for today, and we'll see what we can find tomorrow on the load board. So uh, you'll have to check in on tomorrow's video to see if we actually get something. Uh, otherwise, we may just come down here and get the truck washed and call it a day. I don't know. I've got a text out to my uh, mobile guy, the mobile wash guy. And uh, so I might get, get the truck washed right here in the spot. And... Uh, He's the same price as those guys, and he does like 10 times better job. So, um, yeah, I'm looking looking forward to uh, to uh, hopefully getting this thing cleaned up. I know I've been talking about it for like two weeks, but it's going to happen. At some point, I will get a truck wash. I promise. <laughs> All right, that's it. I got to go. Love you guys. Peace out. See you on the next load.